about a game. It's a red stick. So, when I made the first laser tutorial, I mentioned that there was a better method that would solve a lot of the problems and that maybe I would make a tutorial about this, but you guys were on your hands and knees licking up the floor, begging for scraps, and I thought, you know what, I better give them what they want. They really wanted the second part to the laser tutorial that solves this issue where the laser isn't really coming from above and in fact is also on the underside and the laser kind of has duplicates on the same, like, slice. Without further ado, you can stop begging. Let's get into the tutorial. So. Here's the setup I've made. It's basically the same kind of scenario from the first one, except you're gonna notice one major, major difference. And that is that the monkey is capturing this laser and it's not under it. So there's no duplication. It's not under the monkey, nothing like this. It works with rotation. It works with pretty much anything. You could just duplicate it, put it above. So now uh, the laser's captured on this monkey, but not the bottom one. And the trick that I'm gonna show you to do this, which is gonna be slightly different. It's gonna be a very, kind of subtle variation on the first one. It's all going to be about using a light with a node group. So instead of an object with a node group, we take our lights and apparently you can put nodes on lights. And the nice thing about this is we can move around the light, which is actually going to move around our laser in kind of a more intuitive way than the mathematical approach with vector rotate. And you could rotate the lasers. You could literally duplicate a light and add a second laser and change the color for this one. Um, there's a whole lot of possibilities, so without further ado, for the second time, let's get into it. I hope you guys can stop begging and we can kind of put this behind us. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the idea, like I said, is using this light with nodes to project stuff down. Now, to do this, we're going to have to go through one little disadvantage, one little bump in the road, and that is we cannot be using EV. We can't use EV. We need to use cycles because there are no light nodes, light path, or not light paths. There's, you can't put nodes on your light in, si in EV. <laughs> Switch to cycles is what I'm trying to say while stuttering like nobody else. So cycles, let's set up our basic scene like I did before. So we're gonna have a floor plane and we can have a monkey or any object. Again, it's independent of the geometry and we can have as much geometry as we want, especially now that it's not material based. So we're gonna have our monkey on here Cool, now we're pretty much halfway done. As I always say, we're halfway done shading workspace, rendered mode, and you can see that we have our scene where the light is working like a light, and let's save this bad boy. Okay, so how do we turn this light into something that projects laser beams? Well, we use the same node network as before, if you've seen that tutorial, but now we do it on the light. So first of all, I'm gonna hit N to get all these properties. I wanna zero out the rotation, even though it's kind of like a point, so it's almost as if there is no rotation but zero this out and I'm just gonna position this kind of in the middle and above so the laser is just coming directly from above in the middle. Okay, cool. Uh, when you have your light selected, you can either go to the light options, whatever this is called, and enable use nodes, which again is only a feature, only a feature of cycles. You go to EV, it's not there anymore. So don't, don't ask me in the comments. You switch to cycles, either enable use nodes here or hit this use nodes checkbox. And the nice thing about this, if you didn't know, is that this is actually what's happening behind the scenes with cycles. So when you make your light brighter, what you're really doing is making the emission have a bigger strength. And you can change the color of this, and it's all pretty intuitive. So if we were to make that compare node setup from before and put it into the strength, that would do exactly what we need. Although there is a bit of a, a couple technicalities we need to talk about. So texture coordinates node. And this time, instead of using something like generated, let's even see what this does. So generated doesn't give us anything because the light doesn't <coughs> the light doesn't have generated coordinates. Normal coordinates actually happen to be what we want, and this is all about light bounces bouncing off the normal. That's why it works. Normal coordinates is what we want, or alternatively, you can use um, object coordinates, but you'd have to position it uh, in a certain way. Maybe reflection is the same as normal. It's up to you, but I would recommend normal or reflection. And you can see now that the rotation of the light actually does matter. Okay, so let me center this on X and Y so it's perfectly centered. And you can already see it's kind of projecting these texture coordinates, these normal texture coordinates onto the mesh. And there's nothing below it, which kind of indicates it's gonna work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate by X, Y, Z. We're interested in the X component. Again, going from left to right, we have the X component, but you're gonna notice there's something a bit strange. Unlike the previous scenario, where it works kind of exactly how you'd expect, here we have a bit of curvature. And this is just a result of how these uh, texture coordinates work. Uh, with the light, we need to do a bit of normalization to get rid of this curvature. 
Uh, but before we handle that, let's just complete the effect. So what did we say we need to do? We need to add in a math node, set this to compare. So we're comparing our X values from the normal coordinates of the light. We're comparing this to a value of let's say zero with a threshold of the epsilon. So we're saying, how close are these two, or <laughs> really what we're saying is, are these two values, the x and this value within, let's say 0 0.1 of each other, and if so, make it white. And here you can see we almost have a strip of light, but there's a bit of curvature. If we make this very small, it's gonna be kind of imperceptible, but there is still a bit of curvature. Okay, so now we have kind of the basic setup for our laser beam, and you can see it's doing, you know, the thing where it doesn't have light uh, below it but I say we should fix this curvature. And before that, you can also see that there's kind of a bit of blurring going on, which is strange because the compare should just give us a one or zero map, no kind of gradient in between. And this is because it's using physically based light interactions to do this, meaning if we take our size and change it, it's actually gonna be kind of like a blurring effect, a blurring effect. So if we set this to zero, we should get that infinite sharpness that we want for our laser beam. Okay, so now how do we handle the curvature? Let me make it more obvious. How do we handle this? Well, I said that we need to, in some sense, normalize these coordinates. And the way we do this is because of how the light works, long story short, what we need to do is divide by the Z component. This is what's gonna get rid of all that curvature. I did a tutorial about this with projectors. So how do we do this? Well, I'm gonna add in another separate X, Y, Z, and this time we're gonna use this X. So let me connect that. <laughs> Let me connect that. There we go. And we're going to use our normal coordinates. So effectively, nothing has changed, right? I'm just making a copy. Nothing has changed. But in this chain, we want to divide by the Z coordinate for some mathematical reason. To do this, you add in vector math. You go to divide, just D for that quickly. M is multiply, A is add, D is divide. And we want to divide by X, Y, and Z, all these components. We want to divide by Z. Boom. There you go. So what's happening here? We took our normal coordinates. We said we only want the Z component, and then we want to divide our normal coordinates by the Z component, which we then do the same thing as before. Now we're extracting the X. So here is the before. Again, curvature, not good. After with the division, and it works with any kind of epsilon value. Nice. Okay. So we're pretty much done almost for real this time. Uh, all we need to do is make this look a bit more like a laser, which might be as simple as, first of all, making this to strength. And we can make that a bit stronger by adding in a uh, multiply. So multiplying by one does nothing. Multiplying by five makes it five times brighter. Multiplying by 50 makes it very bright. And you can see it's actually trying to calculate all those light bounces, but we need more samples. And of course, this is another disadvantage uh, to the cycles method. There's no bloom. At least, at least if you don't want to use compositing, there's no bloom, but we do got that physically accurate, like light stuff going on. Like you can see some of the underside of the monkey is illuminated, whatever. So I'm going to set this to five. And then for the color, we can make it red or whatever lasery color you want. I'm considering making this half as thick. So divided by two. Okay. Make that brighter 15, 25. And once we make this big enough, it should turn like close to white. So now you can see it's kind of has white and red because it's like so intense, so hot is a way to think about it. And again, we can change the color of this laser. And because this is determined by our light, you can rotate it, you can um, move it. And it's a nice, easy controller, duplicate the light. And now you have these things working independently from each other, meaning you could do all this light stuff. And I think the way this works is it's normal color math. So where these lasers intersect, it should technically be a, you know, yellowish, which it seems like it is. This works with our objects moving and all this. And there's one more thing I don't think I even talked about yet, which is kind of the coolest part. Uh, since this is a physically based light shooting and projecting light, what? Our light source is projecting rays everywhere. This means that we can do a volumetric effect where we can kind of see this projection process using volumetric. So I'm gonna make a cube. I'm gonna set this to have a new material and we want this to be a volumetric. So principled volume, connect this to the volume socket and you can kind of see it's already working but the density is way too strong, it's too thick. So we wanna turn this into more of a mist where you can now see kind of the cutting plane that of course uh, rotates the way it's supposed to. And this is kind of a cool, like you're, you're trying to break into a bank and you're doing that mist thing and you know, 
what are you doing? You're like crawling on the floor like you were begging for this tutorial and you're like, spray, spray. Um, that's, the, that, that's the idea. And this works with however many light sources you want. Or alternatively, if you don't want to do that like whole box thing, just go to world um, in the volume of the world, which means the volume everywhere, which does take longer to calculate, I believe. You connect the volume, you make this way smaller. In fact, smaller than it was for the cube, so let's say 0.02. And now you can see that it's working, um, but it kind of goes infinitely far because we just said constrain it to some X value. There's a way to fix this, but you're going to have to beg, beg for a, a third tutorial if you want that. Um, I would say last thing, let's get rid of this. Last thing to just make this look a bit better is right now the only light source is this laser. We want to have some maybe HDRI magic going on. So I'm going to add in HDRI. I'm going to pick this one because I like this one. And let's make that way less intense. So now we have some interesting like bluish lighting because we're in this jungle environment, which we can make invisible. But we still have that very, very nice uh, light source from the laser. And finally, if you want that kind of bloom effect back, what I recommend is we can do either just like uh, compositing with the brightest part or we can look at the emission channel, which I'm looking for. Maybe emission channel isn't the way to do it. We'll just do it by brightness. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a basic render of let's say 32 samples, so nothing nothing crazy here. Hit render, wait for that to finish, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a glare node that's only gonna affect the brightest parts of the image. So, compositing workspace once we have our render. Let's see what that looks like. All we need to do, whoops, all we need to do <laughs> is zoom in to here, and we are going to add in a glare node, and this is just to kind of mimic the EV thing, and you can see it's already isolating the brightest part of the image. This is determined by the threshold. I like fog glow better than that. So this is without and with. So it looks much better uh, with. And again, threshold is gonna determine how crazy it is. So point one is gonna make everything bright. You make that two, I guess nothing changes. But you can also isolate the uh, glow or the inverse of the glow, there you go. So you can do all this kind of compositing stuff, but that's not really the point of this tutorial. So there you go. You begged for it, you have it. I hope you enjoyed this laser redux return of the lasers. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to kind of see more off the channel, like behind the scenes stuff and you want to support and all this, Patreon is the way to do that. What are you gonna get with your patronage other than, you know, donating to me effectively. Uh, you're gonna get behind the scenes content, whether that be exclusive video tutorials for that tier, uh, project files, you know, the blend files for, I guess this as well, we could put that blend file up there. You're gonna get behind the scenes in general, Discord access, sometimes scripts, it kind of depends on what I'm doing, but that is kind of the one-stop shop for all that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. I think it was a good one. Very exciting. I kind of have the laser here with the microphone. I didn't even notice and now I'm just rambling and I can just keep going faster and faster and no, nobody's going to stop me.